Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, and today we're going to be rewiring a short pipe lamp. Now, the short pipe lamp implies the existence of the long pipe lamp. And this is a long pipe lamp which has uh, simply been uh, robbed of all of its ornamental parts, so it's standing here before you naked. We've got the base, we've got the pipe, and we've got the socket along with the saddle that holds up the harp. And that's the way the great majority of lamps are made. The short pipe lamp, on the other hand, doesn't have a base. It's just simply an, an open hole. And so what we have up here at the top it's just the socket and a very little short piece of pipe. And that presents some peculiar problems when you're trying to rewire one of these things. Now, besides getting old and wearing out, the most common problem with this type of lamp design is that it gets loose. And there's just no practical way to tighten the parts up. Now, you can usually get it apart by putting a little tension on the saddle. And that'll put the pipe in a bind. And then it'll unscrew cord's already been cut on this one, and the little short pipe will fall out the bottom. Now I'm going to put it back together with a slightly longer piece of pipe because I'm going to be adding a few things to keep it from ever coming loose again. And the first starts off with this blue thread lock. It is a kind of a glue, and I use it on all lamp repairs and reassemblies. And basically is that you put it on the threads, screw the nut down on it, and when it cures, it's going to be nice and tight, and uh, it won't come loose, just with ordinary moving it around, like when you're changing light bulbs or stuff. And we'll put the uh, washer back on it. Then I'm going to add a rubber washer. And the purpose of that is, is that once it's up inside the lamp, this rubber washer is going to apply more friction and I'll be able to get the nut on the outside tighter and that will also keep it from coming loose again. Now the next problem is getting this short pipe back up inside the lamp. And the easiest way to do that is with a screwdriver that's just a little longer than your lamp because I'm going to clamp it down in the vise here with it being just a little bit higher and I can very gently close one eye and there we go it's right in there now on top I'm going to put two rubber washers because I've got a piece of hardware called a check ring which will cover them up and the ceramic will actually be cushioned from the metal on both sides with rubber a little more of the, the blue goop and a knurled brass nut. And this will be the actual piece that holds the pipe to the lamp. Pull out the pliers and I can just tighten this down basically moderately because once I've got those two pieces of rubber on each side of the ceramic tightened down this piece can't move anymore. Next comes the saddle and another knurled nut. And that's its job is to keep this saddle from coming loose. So again, more glue, blue thread lock. Tighten that down. And the good part about the blue thread lock is, is I don't have to get these things so tight that they scream. Because this hardware is kind of lightweight. And it's entirely possible to tighten it until you break something. And then, of course, it's never going to be tight again. There we go. Now the socket just goes on just like this, which so I've got to back this little screw out. And 
And the beauty of this socket with this little screw here means that I can look at where the hole is, where the cord is going to go in the back, and I can get the socket lined up so that the switch is to the front and have it nice and tight on the pipe. Now I like this design of socket where you have a ring with screw threads which holds the uh, shell to the base. They're much stronger and uh, you don't have to worry about it coming loose or anything like that. Although I did have one man brought in a pair of lamps that had this piece just simply broken off. And I looked at them and I realized these are the kinds of sockets that I use. And I said, have I rewired these before? And he said, uh, yeah. And I said, what happened? He goes, my wife is hard on lamps. I didn't ask any more questions. But that brings us up to the problem of how to get the wire into the lamp. Now my padded cradles come in handy again. Not only did they protect the finish on the lamp, they prevent it from rolling off the table which would be a very bad thing to happen. Now, to pull the wire through, I've got this brass rod. It's actually a brazing rod, 1 8 inch brass, but any small steel rod would work as well. You just don't want something that's flexible because you have to stick it through the pipe up at the top and you get it to come out. Have the cord here. Now, there's a very important step at this point that if you don't do this, you've wasted your time and you won't be thinking about it until you're putting in the light bulb. And that is, you have to put the cord through this little hole first. Get out enough slack. Bring it back around. And then, a piece of masking tape. A small piece. And this doesn't have to be too tight, but what you want it to do be is compact. You don't want this to be as small a tape joint as you could possibly make it, because it's got to pass through that piece of pipe at the top of the lamp. And you don't want any more tension on it, so you give it plenty of slack. And when it gets up to the top, you just wiggle it a little bit. And it comes on through. Now from this point forward, it's like rewiring any other lamp. And it starts with tying this familiar knot called the underwriter's knot. And the purpose of this is, is that if someone is walking through the dark and trips over the lamp or the lamp cord, then this knot will prevent the cord from being pulled out of the socket and into the lamp pipe, which of course, if this was a steel lamp, then if you went to pick it up, you would get shot. In any case, we don't make exceptions. This gets done on every lamp. It is possible on some lamps that you could tie a knot down here in the base, but uh, serve the same purpose. I prefer it this way. It's just better to do it the same way every time. Next up, Lamp cord that is sold in the United States has one wide terminal, one narrow terminal. On the cord itself, one side has ridges in the insulation, one side is smooth. A little hard to see, but you can feel them with your thumbnail. The wide terminal goes up the ridge wire all the way up here at the top. And let me see if I can get this piece of tape off the screw, off the cord. There we go. The ridged wire will go underneath the silver screw. The smooth wire will go underneath the brass screw. And this is for reasons of safety. Again, sort of like tripping over the lamp in the dark. It doesn't happen very often, but you want to be prepared when it is. This silver screw goes to the shell. The brass screw goes to the switch and the terminal in the middle. If you were to go into a dark room and try to turn on the light and the light does not have a light bulb in it, it is possible for you to get shocked. 
However, if it is wired with the ridge screw to the silver terminal, if you touch the shell, you won't get shocked. You'd have to stick your finger all the way down inside it to get shocked. And the switch would have to be on at the same time. In any case, that is the solution to that problem. However often it comes up, I'm not really sure. Now we work this all the way up to the top and then pull the slack out of the cord with our get this back a little neater here. Went nice and tight underneath the screw. And then pull it down. Key to the front. Our shell comes down. And this particular kind of shell has a little notch in the back that fits into a piece in the base so that it only goes on one way. And then you very gently have to get this threaded started and it tightens up. This is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, and I thank you for sticking through this video with me on how to uh, rewire a slightly unusual lamp. And uh, we try to put out a video about once a week, and would really appreciate if you would like and subscribe if you haven't already, and come back next week. Again, thank you for watching.